dm is sigma dA. You see, so it's the same integral without the y squared. So I can pretty much cut all these steps out. I can jump all the way to right here, uh, right here when we had the two sigma, and then I could just reduce the power of the x by two. Oh no, uh, sorry, sorry, hold on. Uh, let me jump to, I jumped too much. Oh, okay, yeah, if you're missing y squared, that's gonna change it quite a bit. Okay, let me pick it up from right there. Uh, I can factor the sigma out. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna miss the i squared, of y squared, so I'm gonna have four minus x dy. And then, now I could do the integral in terms of y again. So uh, four minus, uh, oh, in terms of x again, sorry. dy is two x dx, so two comes out. It's going to be 2x squared minus x cubed over 3, 0 to 4. All right. So that's going to be 4 squared, 16 times 2 is 32, minus 4 cubed over 3. So that one, the reason we do that is so that we can know the relationship between sigma and m, what the, the mass density and the mass. So we have here m equals 2 sigma, what is that, uh, 96 minus 64 is, is uh, 32 over 3. So now we can substitute here, we can say, um, Sigma is equal to 3m over uh, 64. And so the mass density is equal to 3m over 64. By the way, what the number that we found here is the, is the surface area of the, um, of the object. Because C, the sigma surface density, is mass over surface area by definition. So the, the, the number that we found, 64 over 3, the meaning of it is the surface area of that shape. The uh, cross-sectional surface area, you know, it's a two-dimensional shape. Okay, so now we can factor that sigma into the other expression and we, we finally got it. I about the x-axis, of that shape is uh, 2 times 4 to the 7th times uh, sigma is going to be 3m over 64 times uh, uh, 42, right? So what is that? Put it all into the calculator. It's probably going to end up being uh, Is that? Thirty-six point five seven M. Okay. Is it that big? Did you do the forty two? Oh, because the fourth to the seventh, huh?
Did you do the 42? Yeah, still that big? Okay, now let's compare that. Let me just see if this makes sense. If the shape had been like this, let's say a rectangular shape from uh, 0 to 4, and then here had been 16, right? This had been 16, 4, I mean 4, 16. This has been 0, 16. What would the moment of inertia of that have been if I rotated around this axis? Let's compare the two. Because I always want to say at the end, okay, let's make sense what's going on here. What would the moment of inertia of that had been? Well, we learned how to do that in the lab on uh, the other day, right? The moment of inertia going through the center huh? is, uh, that's this one, right? We, whatever you call that, I guess we could call that IXX since it's going in the X direction. <coughs> Right, going through the center of mass, what would that have been? 1 twelfth m. And remember, we learned that the length along the axis doesn't count. Only this one, 16 squared plus the thickness squared, which is 0. Right? The length along the axis doesn't count. So the, the perpendicular axis, 16 squared plus 0 squared, since we're assuming it has no thickness. So it would have been 16 squared is um, 256 over 12 m. Then we would have shifted that from here to here. Okay? So I about the x axis would have been 256 over 12 m plus how much is the shift? M, and then the distance here is 8. So 8 squared. The shift is 8, and then you square it. So you have uh, 64 plus uh, whatever that is. 2, is that a perfect number? 2, 16. So 64 plus 20 something. About 80 something, huh? Eight, what is it? 80. Eighty five point three M. Okay, so to rotate the same kind of shape with a size four and sixteen but rectangular around the bottom edge is eighty five point three M. And then to rotate this one, which was shaped like this about the bottom, is thirty six point five seven. It's easier or harder? Easier. Is that should it be? Yeah, it's got this missing piece. The distribution of mass is closer in, right? Closer in. So it should be easier. How about if I want to rotate it about the top end? Should it be easier or harder than rotating this about the top end? Let's say I fix the top end, rotate the whole thing about the top axis. It should be. Starts with H. Harder, okay? So uh, you would shift it from here to where? To the center? To the center? To there. Ah, you're getting it now, okay? <laughs> See? You're getting it. Let's do it. Here's the final thing that will end this. Let's do this I about the top axis. Let's show that it's greater than 85.3. If we do, then it's beautiful. It's like it's all making sense. We got the hang of it. 